In this video, I want to talk about uh, this AR-15 style uh, rifle and how to reload it. And um, again, as a reminder, if you haven't already watched it, please watch my firearm safety video. I put a, a link to it in, in all my descriptions. So definitely watch that before you handle any firearms or you, before watching any of my other videos, okay? Um, okay, so with that out of the way, I just want to show you that there's actually two methods that I want to show you in regards to reloading the like an M16 AR-15 style rifle. Um, and just a disclaimer, I am in my home, so obviously you're not going to be seeing me shooting and then reloading. I'll be using uh, snap caps. Uh, I don't have a tactical, um, you know, vest or anything with me right now, so you know I'm just kind of putting it here just so just so it, I, I, it's easy for me to access, but. You know, obviously, if you have like a mag pouch or a vest with mag holders, you'd be using that instead. And uh, I'll be using the snap caps, uh, which function, it will allow the weapon to function as if it's a real uh, round, uh, everything other than shooting, obviously. It'll feed and extract the same way. But for safety reasons, I don't have any live ammo close to, close to this area. And also, uh, a lot of the, the movements you see me do, do, like dropping the magazine, I won't be dropping it on the ground, mainly because I'm in my house and I'm barefoot, so if I drop this magazine on my foot, it will hurt. So, just use your imagination. So basically, with the Air 15, reloading is super, super, super easy. Um, first of all, the firearm tells you when it's empty. Uh, you can even hear it. it tells you verbally, hey, I'm empty. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that. To release the magazine is just this little button here. You just press this button and the magazine comes, comes right out. You can see this. It requires no, no effort at all unless you're in California. Um, and then to insert the new magazine is the same thing. Even though it's curved, a lot of people make mistake thinking that you need to curve it in. You know, you, and when you do it like this with the cur follow the curve, it won't go. Ignore the curve, just insert, let me see, get back in the light, insert it straight up, that's all you have to do, straight up, and it's super, super easy, it has no resistance when you do that, you do it like this, and you'll be fighting with it before it goes, so just ignore the curve of the magazine, insert it straight up, okay, and, um, to release the bolt, because after you fire the last round, like I was saying before, this, this firearm tells you when it's empty. It locks the bolt to the rear, which, I mean, that's nothing new. Uh, that's pretty standard with all firearms, except for the ones made by H&K. Um, but yeah, so it will lock to the rear. So I mean, like, yeah, you can visually see that it's empty, but, but more than visually, like I was mentioning before, it tells you uh, audibly, like you actually could hear it. And I can't really replicate that here, but the AR-15 has a spring that goes through a tube, like this tube right here. There's like a tube right here that's, you know, where the, your stock goes over. So given that and the relatively small size of the, uh, um, the round that it shoots, which is a 5.56 by 45 millimeter round, or otherwise uh, 223, you know, combine that with how small a round it is, you actually hear a lot of the, uh, of the mechanisms of the rifle. So it's not like it's so loud that it overshadows all of that. And while you're shooting, you actually do hear the spring compressing and then when, especially when it releases, you hear kind of like a twang, right? When it's out, since it locks the bolt to the rear, it doesn't re-extend, it just stays compressed. So you, it's missing that last little bounciness, that last little twang. Uh, so you can actually hear when the bolt is locked to the rear because it'll just be like, instead of you hearing that spring, it just, you, you hear the mechanism go back and then that's it, it'll stop. If you hear that sudden, sudden stop, that sudden silence, uh, go ahead and take the visual uh, um, confirmation that you're empty. Um, and it's not just a double feed or something like that that's causing it to, to not uh, for, for the bolt to not go back forward, you know, and then you know it's empty and it's very, very simple. 
So, like I said, there was two. There are two methods to reloading, and I will show you uh, the two in kind of slower than I would actually do it when I'm out in, in, in the range or out training with shoes on. So, basically, you're shooting, you're shooting, shooting, you're out. You hear it is out. You just tilt your weapon slightly like this. And I mean, it's a very slight tilt. Like, this is straight when you're shooting, and this is what I'm talking about. What that does, I can actually see right into the chamber um, of, the, of the rifle, and I can see that it's actually empty. Uh, if it's a double feed, you would see the casing in there, and then another uh, round trying to feed the, behind it. Like, they're like brightly gold colored, you'll notice it, especially if it's in the middle of the day. Even at night time, you'll, you'll notice it. Um, so it's it's a very quick visual uh, confirmation uh, called a chamber check, which I can already see my comment section lighting up with the people that say chamber checks are stupid. But that's your opinion. Go ahead and make a video about how stupid chamber checks are. This is my video. So when you're when you're firing and you don't hear that last that last twang, just quick little peek. This takes uh, a full you know, one one hundredth of a second. You know, I know that's 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 just so much. And then you push the button with your trigger finger. You know, you're here shooting, fingers on the trigger is out. You take the finger off the trigger while you're checking. You know, this is stuff that you need to take anyway. So instead of just doing it without doing anything, do it while checking. And you can either just reload straight from here. And this is where this is where the two methods differ. Uh, you can either just drop the magazine, imagine that drop to the floor without me grabbing it, while you grab going for your other magazine, either up here or wherever you might have it, and like I said, ignore the curve. Insert it straight up, and and then on this side of the firearm, there's something called a uh, slide stop, slide release. There's a big paddle on the top and a little nipple on the bottom. The nipple on the bottom you would use to lock the bolt to the rear. Uh, it will do that automatically on the last round while shooting. So the opposite one, the, big, the bigger paddle on the top, is to release the bolt. So all you have to do when you're reloading, after you put in a fresh magazine with the, with the ammunition, is you hit, you hit that or you push it with your thumb. I mean, that's personal preference too. Um, a lot of people um, would say that, oh, you want to slap it instead of use your thumb because you lose your, your your uh, fine motor skills. A lot of people argue that that doesn't happen with training and both are valid arguments. And then the ones that say that it doesn't happen with training and they prefer pushing it would argue that slapping it, sometimes you could miss it because your, your hand might cup like this. So when you're slapping it, the cupped part of it might go over it. But I've gotten used to, I don't use that part of my palm to slap it. I use the meaty part of my palm you know, the part that's between here and there to, sl to slap this. So I slap it like this. I've never, I've never missed it once ever, you know. So, so for me, it works. Like again, I'm not knocking the people that, that, that uh, advocate using the, uh, pushing the button with your thumb. You know, actually both ways work. It's just I've trained to slap it and I'm just used to it and it's always worked out for me. So for me, I, I'll keep doing that. If pushing the button works out for you, and you can you feel like you can do that even under stress, you know, uh, run run a couple laps, come really quickly pick up it, the uh, rifle, shoot a couple rounds, and reload. And if you find that you can do everything, you know, great. That's actually perfect. You know, I mean, that's that's good because that requires even fewer movements. You know, like once you reload, you know, while your hand is right here, you just slide straight up and push it. So it's actually a good method as well. Now I mentioned the um, the second method to reload. Um, the pushing or slapping is not are not the two methods. So I've reset the weapon, uh, bolts locked to the rear, empty magazine. So basically, with with the second method that I, I'm talking about, the beginning is, is about the same. You know, you're shooting, you're shooting, you're shooting, and you know, you stop shooting. You do your your chamber check. 
But this time, instead of simply dropping a magazine from here and reloading, what you do is you actually tuck it in under here. Um, it's not a method that, that I've been training in, so I'm not you know an expert in this, but I'll, I'll do my best. But basically, you do your chamber check, and you tuck it down like this. So now the, the, the rifle is, the butt is kind of, kind of not really like under your armpit, but kind of like between your arm and kind of resting on your upper body. Uh, and you do, you do all this while releasing the magazine. And what you might notice from people who do this is that the magazine would kind of get thrown off to the side. And I don't know, I think there might be a lot of people who have a misconception that the reason why uh, people do this method is because they want to throw the magazine. But that's actually just more of a byproduct of it. The reason why, from my understanding, to get into this method is that from here, you can easily move with the weapon rather than from here is a little bit harder to, to move and reload. This is more, you have more support. Uh, you actually, like actually I don't really feel too much of the weight of the, the firearm when I do it this way. Um, so I mean I can definitely see the benefits of this. Uh, but it's just like I said, I haven't really trained that way um, before. So you know I might start because I always try everything, see if it, if, if it, if it feels good, if it does, I'll start doing it. So you'll be shooting, 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 chamber check, release the, the magazine, again, I don't want to hit myself in the toe, get the, your fresh magazine, and you insert it straight in. And you see the angle from this, it's actually pretty good as well, because you know you have the, the firearm angled with the magazine well towards your support hand where you'll be inserting the magazine. And from here, of, of course, you can pick between Pressing the, the uh, slide, um, I keep calling it slide stop, the bolt stop, or strapping it with your palm. And one thing I wanted to add uh, for this style weapon, the AR 15, um, M16 style, style weapon, if you, you haven't loaded it yet, this is the first time loading it, uh, obviously you know about you know, using the charging panel here, but I see it done in a lot of ways that doesn't really seem as efficient, including you know, taking a shooting hand out and charging this way to, to load the first round from, from a magazine. Uh, this is a method that I find is, is a lot easier, simpler, and then you never have to take your shooting hand off the, off the uh, rifle, is after you put in the fresh magazine and you, you're going to load it for the first time, basically just, you know, obviously when you're about to shoot, you have your nose pretty much up against the charging handle so you can't really operate it that way so you know basically just lift the head, your head up off the buttstock and the lever to release to release the charging handle is on this side so with the support hand you grab the charging handle disengaging that lock after you've done that all you have to do is just pull straight back and, and let it go. And I'll go show you right now how easy that, that is. And so you put in the new magazine, and that's it. Again, show you a second one. Pretty simple. And you know, again, you never have to take take your hand off the uh, the pistol grip of the of the rifle when you're doing that rather than then you see some people trying to reach over and doing this, or maybe do this, you know, where I have to take the rifle completely out of the shoulder. But, you know, the way that I mentioned, you just do it from here. And it's a lot simpler that way. Now, there's a lot of uh, videos and a lot of people that would tell you to put, put your weapon on safe before you start to reload. I mean, you know me, every, my, every one of my videos I talk about watching my firearm safety video, I do definitely take firearm safety very, very seriously, but, but to me, that one extra step, I don't really believe is necessary in my opinion. I mean, if you want to train, train like that in the beginning, 
if it's not, uh, you know, when you're just kind of getting accustomed to the firearm, uh, I do actually recommend that. That's good, you know. But I think once you get a little bit more comfortable with the firearm, to where you have, you know, how to safely operate it, um, you know, you're, with with everything else, you're you're safe with the way you handle it, and you you get very familiar with all the the motions, where all the buttons are, where all the levers are, um, to where you, you, everything is very like second nature. You don't really have to think about it too much. Then maybe you want to start practicing just keeping the firearm on on fire or whichever uh, firing mode that you you be on when you're shooting uh, while you do your reload. It just cuts cuts back on that one extra step, um, especially if. If you're, you're shooting uh, less for recreation and more for, um, you know, preparing for self-defense, which I mean, like, you're not going to be carrying an AR-15 out in the street with you. I mean, you see some of these people that do it just just to get attention on in open carry uh, states, but realistically, you're not going you're not going to carry this around for for, for self-protection. You'll be drawing way too much attention. I, I think it's not really a good idea. But for for your house. You know, for protecting your house, you can use anything. You know, I have a shotgun that's right by my bed. You know, got the AR-15, got the handguns, but you know, got the lights attached to some of them. You know, what I mean, like, you can use anything when you're inside your house, and it's whatever you feel will work best for you. So, definitely, and and also if you uh, are getting into any kind of profession or anything like that where you'll be using this, you know, yeah, it's definitely something that's good to good to good to learn. So, you know, definitely, you know, train very often with it so you get very comfortable, you know, with it, you're very familiar. I don't want to say comfortable because I want you to be complacent at the same time. Just very uh, confident with, with the, the firearm before you start getting more advanced in, in the way you operate it. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I just want to thank you for watching this video and uh, please, you know, leave any comments uh, that you, you may have. And check out my other other videos. Subscribe so you'll be notified when I upload new ones. And um, you know, just keep training. You know, keep training. Keep having fun with it. Uh, but always be safe. Okay.